that ended abruptly the end of that track it was about four minutes long and it had like four artists on it but they were all spitting you know saying you know they got to keep it on you know you know in a certain time frame because you know for airplay you know and stuff like that um you know maybe they might have another track where they got a full compilation you know it might go longer like five minutes you know you know or longer you know and they all can just spit off a little bit you know what I'm saying but we've been people been it's called a program been programmed you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying so many minutes and some seconds you know what I'm saying because it's all fit up in a format you know what I'm saying as far as you want airplay you know what I'm saying like that I mean like what's up like I mean, the Christians really own some stuff. Why we got got to be? The world built the model, and we still operating in the world's system. You know what I'm saying? Why we can't build our own and create our own system? You know what I'm saying? You know, create our own system. You know, make another business model. You know, like this word say. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind, but we we steady being conformed, you know what I'm saying, allowing the world to shape us and mold us in the way we think, act, and live and believe and talk and walk. You know what I'm saying? Like that. We will be changed. But we still conforming to the world, the world system. Why? To fit in the world. Because this is how they do it in the world. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we gonna we not gonna reach the world if we don't think like the world and we don't. You know what I'm saying? Walk like the world. Talk like the world. We don't fish like the world. You know what I'm saying? And we don't dress it up and make it look like the world. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to reach them. That's what they got. You know what I'm saying? That's the belief they got. And I believe that God can do something out the box. You know what I'm saying? Unconventional. I mean, Christ showed us the way. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do stuff according to a lot of traditions of men. The doctrines, traditions, commandments of men. You know what I'm saying? Even his apostles, after he had risen, you know what I'm saying, told them they was going to do greater works. The people were saying, you know what I'm saying, these people who have turned the world upside down have come here too. They over here. We heard about them over there preaching and teaching them with the people, you know what I'm saying, taking them out of these, you know, the culture and idolatry and sinners and stuff. They, they turning the world upside down. But here we is, you know what I'm saying, we we trying to fit in it. They weren't trying to fit in the world. They was, you know what I'm saying, advancing the kingdom of God in the earth. That's what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Spreading the kingdom of God, taking territory. Not physical territory. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But by winning souls, when you win souls, and, you know what I'm saying, people, you know what I'm saying, they have authority over the, the land and stuff like that, you know, or wherever they live at. When you win, when we win the souls and God got them, that's another a person that God has in that area, in that territory, his witness, you know what I'm saying, his servant, you know what I'm saying, that he can empower, he can equip, he can bless, you know what I'm saying, to be a blessing to more people, to reach more people. But we... A lot of us, you know what I'm saying, so conformed to the world that if it don't fit in the world's model and shape and everything like that, they're not going to receive it. They're not going to, we got to water it down. We got to, you know, or just plain give it up and be conformed to this world. Being like Demas, Demas, he loved this present world. The Apostle Paul said, he forsook me. He ain't just forsook him, he forsook the Lord. He apostatized. Okay? And a lot of people are doing that all the time. The word of God said, when a son of man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Oh, my God. Okay, when the Lord comes, please. He's coming back for the faithful, those who are full of faith and who have an expectation of hope in him. Okay? There's going to be a lot of people, they're going to have a profession of faith, but they're not going to have no real true faith. You know what I'm saying? And that man, no real true faith. The word of God says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know what I'm saying? Jesus said, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that the people in the world are seeking after. He said they will be added unto us. He didn't say we was going to work for it. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? We, we obtain the promises of God by faith and being faithful. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But phew, these people, they think, well, well, if you ain't got the world education, if you ain't got worldly, you know what I'm saying, you know, opportunities, if you ain't got, you know what I'm saying, you, you know, on, earn, you know what I'm saying, worldly wealth, fame or fortune or influence, status, like, you know what I'm saying, as though that's the goal to fit in the world, to be like the world, as though that's the ultimate goal is to have pleasure and satisfaction and contentment in life. It's to conform to the world, the ways the world think, live, and does. But that's not how it is in the kingdom of God. That's not the will of God for the people of God. We are called out people from every tribe, tongue, and nation of people, a holy nation. We probably be showing forth the praise of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We probably be doing greater works. Okay, think about all the miracles that Jesus did. But he's some, somewhere along the line, people got lukewarm. Okay? And they cast away their confidence in the power of God. Their faith and hope is not in God. It's in themselves or in other people or the world system, which is, you know what I'm saying? Under Satan's, you know what I'm saying, dominion. He's the prince of the power of the air. Even now, going, we're going through the airwaves. We're in his territory. See what I'm saying? His demons, are, they, they don't have access to heaven. They were cast out. We're in his territory. We're in the airwaves. We're preaching the gospel. We, you know what I'm saying? We're doing damage to the kingdom of, 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 of Satan. We're in the airwaves. Why do you think they be trying to suppress our content and our influence? You know what I'm saying? Like that. Okay? The devil got his people in place to do his bidding. They taken captive by him to do his will. You know what I'm saying? And his will is the, you know what I'm saying? The powers that those he have in power and authority and got control and rule who are wicked and evil. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't don't let that Christian content, you know what I'm saying, that preach that word, you know what I'm saying, spread far and wild and reach people and they win souls into the kingdom of God, you know? Don't give them access. Keep them suppressed, you know what I'm saying, like that. What do you think this is? It ain't just because it's like we ain't got to be so popular and all this kind of stuff. What do you think? It's Satan working against us. And they want to send stuff talking about, you know, you know, uh write your congressman or something like that. So TikTok won't get banned. They, they don't care about us. <laughs> they care about, you know what I'm saying? They platform, they money. Their God, their God is money. The God of mammon, worldly wealth. That's all they care about. They don't care about us, especially that our free speech. You know what I'm saying? They they infiltrated this country and a lot of other countries through technology, through apps. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Just like other companies that, you know, at, you know, business people that have products and service and, you know, technology, they in other countries as well. But a lot of countries, they can't have that same influence in their country. But look how they, through this app, have infiltrated this country. Got billions of people, you know what I'm saying? Or what we would say, you know, probably got worldwide. But millions of Americans. I don't know. I think they said about one third of Americans are on this app. You know? See, look, see that I told you? They said verify to continue. See? And I had to verify. Why? Because they got set up that if ain't nobody tapping the screen, sharing, inviting nobody, giving gifts, it's all about money and to keep people on the app. You know what I'm saying? Like that. To keep your keep your time occupied. And not only that, not just to be here, that's one thing. You might not be spending money, but we're spending our time on here. We're give, they're collecting data. Data is transferable, you know what I'm saying, and sellable data to, to make money. See what I'm saying? So we not, I'm not on here to get your money. TikTok is on here to get your money. I try to tell people, don't give through that. You know what I'm saying? Don't, you know what I'm saying? Unless you want to support TikTok because they taking like probably 60% of it and probably some of them, they probably robbing us blind. You know what I'm saying? Because people giving, we can't, we ain't counting. We don't know what everybody's giving and how much it is and through a live like that. At the end of the live, you don't know. They just tell you, hey, this is what you got. No, it's what they want to give you. You know what I'm saying? They robbing a lot of people blind. You know what I'm saying? And just, you know what I'm saying? Leaving other people with scraps. You know what I'm saying? Pennies. Why they taking what they want. 
but they want us to advocate for them so they can continue to, you know what I'm saying, do business the way they do business. See, people need to wake up. You know what I'm saying? Somebody had a question, a sister had a question. She had, um, I, think, uh, uh, I saw it on, a, I think it was her YouTube channel. She's on here uh, like that. And uh, she probably, I think she put it on her, what, did I see it on here? I think I see it on both of them, you know, her TikTok and on her YouTube. And she asked the question, is everything free good for you? I think that's what's the question. Like, you know what I'm saying? When people say you got free clothes or free this and they're giving away something, they're saying it's free. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Is everything free good for you? And I answered that and said, no. Everything that's free is not good for you. We should not be quick to jump at everything they say is free because we going to pay for it. And a lot of people going to pay for it in the long run. Even Jesus said that. What shall I pray for the man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? You know what I'm saying? The, the Satan tried to, you know what I'm saying? Deceive our Lord. He showed them all the kingdoms of the world a moment of time and said, all this would I give you if you would just fall down and worship me because it's my, it's in my power to give it to whom I want. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay? For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall you serve. But these people, they selling out for little of nothing, for a piece of bread. They are transgressing against the Lord, forsaking the Lord. Okay? Everything that, you know what I'm saying, they say is free is not good for you, okay? Because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they may gain the world, but they're going to lose their soul in the end. That's how the Satan works. That ain't nothing but bait, you know what I'm saying, to bait people's flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, you know what I'm saying? And they don't realize that they're making, you know what I'm saying, an eternal transaction, you know what I'm saying? This right here that's temporary, you know what I'm saying, for that which is eternal, your eternal soul. And people selling their soul to the devil every day, every day, for little of nothing. They don't even value their eternal souls. But Satan knows the value of an eternal soul. That's going to be another, you know what I'm saying, slave he's going to have, Okay. For him to rule over, him and his fallen angels to rule over. Hmm. Wake up, people. They even trying to suppress, you know, suppress us like we can't have freedom of speech. We live in a country where we have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly and things like that. But on TikTok, you know what I'm saying, like that. If you say certain words and somebody offended or they don't program it in there where they hear certain words and you know, that they're going to end your life and people's account, been, my, I've had a previous account, got suspended, banned. They're just slowly controlling them, you know, control, gaining control over us. They have infiltrated America through technology and people are taking down more and more and more, being conformed to the world, to their way of thinking, living and doing. And remember, China, China is a co communist country ruled by communism. That's the ideology of them. That is infiltrating American, America. You know what I'm saying? America has been infiltrated not through war and bombs and stuff like that or any kind of attack or anything like that, but through technology. Information age. You know what I'm saying? Information is power. You know what I'm saying? And there's just so many people on the line. Scammers, they program computers to do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? And now they want to have AI. You know what I'm saying? Like we want to trust AI, artificial intelligence. They just want to make a God unto themselves and want people to be bound down to a God because us and Satan going to be over that. He going to be over all that. How you think he, the Satan can't be in every place at every time like God is omnipresent? But through technology, he will. <laughs> He'll be able to see, be like, you know what I'm saying, the all-seeing eye. You know what I'm saying? To see where everything, everybody going, you know, tracking everybody. You know what I'm saying? For you know to have people hooked up to machines like we've seen these futuristic movies and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody living no real life. They hooked up to a darn, you know what I'm saying, virtual reality. You know what I'm saying? Why they got robots, you know what I'm saying, out living their lives. Come on, people. Wake up. Before, you know what I'm saying, become a battery. Like, you know what I'm saying? What's that movie? The Matrix. 
You get caught in the matrix. You know what I'm saying? With the computer world, the technology, you know what I'm saying, is conscience, and it begins to defend itself. It doesn't trust man because it knows the nature of man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. That's called self-destruction. Remember? You're headed for self-destruction. Self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction. That's what the world's on the path to. Self-destruction. Creating their own self-destruction. Creating, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Destroying one another and destroying themselves. From the beginning, what happened? Cain slew his brother Abel. Okay, destroyed, you know what I'm saying? Unalived them, see? Ended his life. See? Sin into the world. And what, what we see the result? Unalived, you know, one brother killed. Unaliving his other, his own flesh and blood, his, his own kin. You see, it's nothing new under the sun. You see wars, rumors of wars, Israel, Iran, Russia, Ukraine. Now America, fear they going to be under some kind of attack. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I mean, look, you had a guy set, his, set, his, set himself on fire outside of the courthouse where Donald Trump was, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, going to be having this, uh, his case at. Lit himself with some accelerant and lit it for the whole world to see. You know what I'm saying? Lit himself up. Basically hell on earth. I mean, so many people, they are nothing but the walking dead. The walking dead. And they're, they're you know, just like you see the zombie movies. They're going around trying to bite and devour one another. And it would never satisfy. You notice that when they bite and they eat the flesh and they eat the brain of people, stuff like that, it never satisfied. They not like saying, oh, I'm full. I'm hung. I, my appetite is full. Let me sit down and, you know, take a break for um, um, eating flesh. You know what I'm saying? Like that. No. Because the eyes of man are never satisfied. That worldly, sinful, carnal, you know what I'm saying? Lustful appetite. Sinful desire, it'll never be fulfilled. The word of God tells you that the eyes of men are never full, nor is his, you know what I'm saying, his evil appetite. The word says their God is their belly. Okay? And it's never satisfied. They never get to the place they say, I'm full. You know what I'm saying? They are greedy, greedy dogs, the Bible said. They are greedy dogs. Okay? Don't give that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they turn again and tear at your flesh. Tear at you. Greedy dogs. They never fool. And that's how people are in their lives. They are the living, the, you know what I'm saying? So to speak, walking dead. Going around biting and devouring one another. You know what I'm saying? Through their carnal, worldly, sinful, you know what I'm saying, appetites. And they never are satisfied. They never fool. The word says they are greedy dogs, loving to slumber, loving to lie down. All they care about is their gain in their quarter. They never satisfied. People in the world got millions of dollars being, and they never satisfied. Their mind is not on being charitable, you know what I'm saying, to other people. They are greedy of gain. They are idolaters. They worship the God of mammon. You know what I'm saying? They live for, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? To please their lust, their flesh. Haters of God. Wake up, people. If we don't start speaking up, speaking the truth in love, they want to get to the point where they will suppress our voices. You know what I'm saying? That even, you know what I'm saying, reading the word of God, having a Bible, you know what I'm saying, or preaching or speaking any word in there, it will be illegal and the punishment will be unalive, man. Okay? Ain't going to be no speak. It's going to scrape it's trap. You know what I'm saying? No due, due diligence, justice, none of that. Oh, you are, you a professing Christian? That's enough, you know what I'm saying? Put you on, a, you know what I'm saying, the firing squad. Take you out. Because that's how Satan going to have it in his world. And we're going to be hiding in caves and, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. We're going to be public enemy number one. And we don't speak up, okay? 
Satan's going to have his minions, you know what I'm saying, do his work. Like I was saying, God set himself on fire, hell on earth. People weren't about going, please, hell on earth. It's going to begin here, okay, before it is it, it consummate in the eternity of, uh, you know what I'm saying, banishment from the presence of God in, in Hades. It's going to begin here on this planet. You're seeing people destroying themselves, setting themselves on fire. You know what I'm saying? Zealous of a political ideology. See? They're not trying to, nobody, you know what I'm saying, tell them the truth so they can be saved. And the person going to the screen that they setting themselves on fire? Basically almost unaliving themselves. We don't know if he's going to survive. I pray that, you know. But his life ain't going to be, ne it's never going to be the same. Never going to be the same. And you can tell, I bet he regretted that, you know what I'm saying, seconds after that. Because once that setup was on him, he, he went up in flames like that. Oh, it wasn't no putting out just like that. You, you know what I'm saying? He experienced that straight fire, not just any type of fire. They said he drenched himself with some accelerant. I don't know, kerosene, gas, whatever, and lit himself. And the whole world saw it. And within, you know what I'm saying, minutes and, you know what I'm saying, of it or whatever, within the hour, people was on Twitter, X, whatever. They was making me, you know what I'm saying, mocking and joking about this man setting himself. And then other people getting mad, talking about why they filming it and not stopping him. They mad at the people who filming it. See? Basically, you know what I'm saying? Two wrongs don't make it right. I mean, what could they really do? Some people tried. That was an accelerant. They needed a, a strong accelerant to put him out, like putting out a fire. They had to get a fire extinguisher to put him out, the fire off of him. It's, it's sad. It really is. You know what I'm saying? Because people, they, they, they don't care if they're not, if they're not famous. They want to be infamous. They want their names to be associated with the rich and the power. What powerful, the influential, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's in infamy. That's crazy. That means that person is under the influence, you know what I'm saying, of a of a demon, a demonic influence, a sinful influence to do themselves harm or to do somebody else harm intentionally. Okay? Better wake up, people. It's it's starting to spread like wildfire and not out in the in the woods and the forest, you know what I'm saying? And homes and stuff like that. People, this person setting himself on fire. In broad daylight, news cameras out there covering for the whole world to see. That's what he wanted. He wanted to leave a message for the whole world to see. Set himself up just to try to get his message across, his ideology across, and extreme. I mean, you know what I'm saying? A person who is deceived, as the word of God says, they are deceived and they're going about to deceive others. Okay. When people, you know what I'm saying, when they're doing something like that and harm to themselves, or people, they are deceived, okay? Some are children of that wicked one like Cain who slew his brother. It says, wherefore did he slew him? Because his brother's works were righteous and his was evil. He was, you know what I'm saying, he was a child of that wicked one, that Satan. He was doing the works of his father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. He come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He is a liar and the father of all lies. And you starting to see his children, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, those whom Satan has taken captive to do his will, that they will even lay down their lives. They are so deceived, blinded by Satan. We got to be the light and let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We got to be the light so those who are living and walking darkness can see their way out. You know what I'm saying? 
that they may be delivered, you know what I'm saying, from Satan and the power of darkness and be translated into the kingdom of his dear, of our uh, heavenly father's dear son, a kingdom of light, that they too may have an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith that is in Christ Jesus. If we don't let our light shine, okay, if we, okay, if we don't be salt, if we lose our saltiness, then how is it going to be salted again? It ain't good for nothing but be cast down and trodden under the foot of men. And that's how it would be. Okay? Instead of us being the head and not the tail, we would be the darn tail and they'll be trampling over us. We'll be under, you know what I'm saying, Satan's children's feet. It don't supposed to be like that, people. We're supposed to be, you know what I'm saying, the body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? And now it's that, it's, you know what I'm saying, we're in the army of the Lord. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, okay? But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, strongholds over people's lives, okay? Over their homes, over families, over communities, over, you know what I'm saying? States, state houses and statements, you know what I'm saying? The powers that be, strongholds over nations and over those who are rulers of nations. See? Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner, that's all the devil needs is one sinner destroys much good. That's all he needs is one sinner fully deceived to do his will. There's nothing new under the sun, just like it was in the garden. He deceived Eve fully, wholly and completely. Wake up, people. If we don't start being the salt and being light and start speaking the truth and love, the word of truth, that's going that's the only thing that's going to save people from the power of darkness and Satan and evil workers. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we won't be able to stand unless we put on the full armor of God. That's the only way we're going to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And if we don't stand together, uh, the, that, the, the word applies to us. A house divided against itself shall not stand. Whether it's one person in the house or two people in the house or a family, uh, uh, 2.3 or 3, 4 people. Or it goes out more and more, just, you know what I'm saying, just from like that, from a family unit on out to a nation, a kingdom, okay? A house divided against itself shall not stand. And we, as the body of Christ believers, if we don't stand together, we will fall together. We all will fall. Don't think you're going to be able to escape it if we fall, if we fail to be light and to be salt in our homes, in our communities, you know what I'm saying, in our sphere of influence, in our nations, you know what I'm saying, or kingdom, what we're, what we're supposed to be representing the Lord and his power and his rule and his reign, his kingdom. We will be overrun. We will be subdued. We will fall. Like London, okay? All this division and strife, biting and devouring one another, envy and jealous in the flesh, carnal, worldly, sinful. And we don't get rid of that and put, put to death, you know what I'm saying? As the word say, unalive, you know what I'm saying? Our flesh, we're not going, you know what I'm saying, have the victory. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Of course, when the Christ comes or we should... Trans, you know, transition out of this world to be asked from the body to be present with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We supposed to be having victory now, not wait till we, you know what I'm saying, unalive or waiting for Jesus to come back. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, it has already come. It's just not the full consummation of it. And we're supposed to be advancing it. 
okay? In people's lives and their hearts, God transforming them through the power of the gospel because God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It ain't going to come by no other means. If we ain't doing that, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and of the kingdom of God and of the grace of God. People want to be debating about doctrine and they didn't probably live in it. But they want to spend all that time debating. Devouring one another, being consumed of one another instead of us walking in love and being on one accord. And how are we doing that? It is in the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, living in the spirit, walking in the spirit, being led of his Holy Spirit. Only then did God promise that we would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Our victory is in the Holy Spirit. We have to be in unity and one in the spirit and in love. And in power, we have to die to ourselves and to the world, the flesh, and the devil. We're not supposed to be living for ourselves. Christ is supposed to be living out his life, his victorious life, overcoming life, in and through us, in the, in the Holy Spirit, through, in and through the Holy Spirit. And if we ain't doing that, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I don't care if you go to church or you get your money or you go through a lot of stuff. If you are carnal and worldly, you do not please God. God ain't pleased with you. So don't be deceived. Let no man deceive you. If you know you ain't living in the spirit, God is not pleased with you. And so we say repent and get in the spirit, in step with the Holy Spirit. If you ain't doing that, you ain't pleasing God. And matter of fact, ain't good for nothing. The word says, you know what I'm saying? If I do all these things and have not love, it profits me nothing. A man think himself to be something when he's nothing. He deceives himself. You deceiving yourself. People are deceiving themselves, thinking they're deceiving people. Doing the work of Satan. Partnering with him. We don't want to be, you know what I'm saying, doing Satan's bidding, doing his will, allowing ourselves to be deceived, and then going about to deceiving others, partnering, you know what I'm saying, being a friend with the world. Whoever makes himself a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. God, that means God is working against you or I, whoever make ourselves a friend with the world, making friendship with the world. We forgot we died to that. If we don't have the examples, the preaching and the teaching and the examples of it, you know what I'm saying? People can see it to model it. Then we can make real true disciples. And people can, one reason, we can, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got to take responsibility. But if they're, they're, not, they're not been properly discipled, you know what I'm saying? And if they're not walking and living in the spirit, they, then they ain't got nothing to follow. They ain't been taught, they ain't been trained how to live holy and live in the spirit. They don't have no holy deportment. They don't have no holy conduct in their speech, their walk, their talk. It's got to be in the heart. Christ, young women, young women, even older women professing to be Christians and they dress and, 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 and go out and they look like the world, like prostitutes and whores. And they got more of the people in the world in the flesh lusting after them. And because they have worldly wealth, they'll give themselves over to that. Instead of to a godly man, a spirit-filled man trying to honor God, might not have like a, a lot of worldly wealth, but we have that which is eternal. And I'm seeing it all the time, all the they talking about, oh, I love God and everything like that. They done got baptized and everything. You go to their page, they ain't got nothing but flesh on display. They dress like the world. All they, they, they bottoms are out, short skirts and butt all out and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Bully buttons, all that. Breast busting all out of the place. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Talking about they love God. No, they don't. They ain't even taught how to, you know what I'm saying? To live holy. How to conduct themselves. How to carry themselves, how to dress. They think they can still believe and think and walk and talk like the world and just have a mere profession of faith or go through the motions of external religion 
And a lot of that is man-made anyway. That God is pleased with that. No, they are deceived. Even from Christian, they're not te they don't they're not growing up in a Christian home where they have godly examples and they're being taught from a from a child, as the word say, train up a child in the way that they should go, that when they're old they will not depart from it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of Christian parents are failing their kids, their children. And that's why they're being turned out to the world. Matter of fact, they are turning them out to the world. And then they wonder why when they get caught up and they get unalive and they're youth. And they feeling bad. Because they know they had a hand in that. They let them live loose, loose, loose lives. You know what I'm saying? Undisciplined lives. Lives, that, you know what I'm saying, that they don't have to be respect and be submitted to authority. And they get out in the world in Satan's kingdom, you know what I'm saying, in that darkness and get cut down in their prime. And you think a mere profession of faith is going to save you from the wiles of the devil and Satan's children? They're out to steal, to kill, and destroy. They ain't out to do nobody no good. If they reject us, they reject our Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His and the Holy Spirit and His Holy Living Word, His Holy Command, His Order. They reject us. If you reject my God and everything, you reject me. But these people are like, oh, no, it's cool. You ain't got to, you reject God. We can still get together and be friends with the world and be turned out to the world. You ain't going to win them like that. They don't. They don't turn you out. You know what I'm saying? Like a pimp turning out, turning out a, a whore, a whore turning a trick. They don't turn you out. Turn you away from your God, your truth, the His Spirit, His power, His will, His Word, His body, His assembly. Over there in Satan's camp, an enemy of God now, and they wonder why they don't have victory in their lives. You know what I'm saying? In whatever area of their life, their spiritual man, their spiritual life, their hearts broken and ain't ain't being healed. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I heard somebody saying today, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Forgive those people. Your mama can't heal you. Your brother, nobody can heal you but God. So forgive those people. Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, you want you ain't gonna have no peace. That's why people ain't got no peace. They got a profession of faith, but they ain't got no peace of God. In their mind, their will, their emotions, in their body, all this sickness and disease running rampant. They depend more on modern medicine than on having faith in God, obeying his prescription. Call for the elders of the assembly. Let them pray over you, anoint you with oil. Obey the command of Christ. You know what I'm saying? First, with faith and obedience. With an expectation that God gonna fulfill his promise. But no, they'll run right to the doctor. Especially they got a lot, you know, insurance. They'll get them, put them on all this kind of medicine that ain't designed to heal them, but to get them addicted to it. Matter of fact, can even unallow them. Can about, well, you take this, it'll, it'll, you know, curb this and curb that, but the side effects may kill you, okay? Like that. But that's not medicine. Why would you take that? Why would you agree with that? Why would you come into a covenant with death? The word of God says your covenant with death shall be annulled. People are making a covenant with death. And God said it shall be annulled. It shall not stand. People selling out their souls. Think, you know what I'm saying? Is gonna be well with them. Let me calm down. Great job, you going live? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting the spirit speak expressly. I've long time holding my peace. The word of God said, "Cry aloud and spare none." We spared too many people. They spoiled. Spared the rod to spoil the child. You know what I'm saying? And not just the child. You know what I'm saying? Grown damn men and women. Because they can't handle, they can't receive, they don't have the love of the truth in them. 
You try to speak the truth and love to them, they don't want to receive it. They don't, you know what I'm saying, got no love for it. They've been spoiled from, from a youth. Now they in, they're adults and everything got their kid got grand, and they still spoil, rotten, corrupt. Okay, in their hearts, in their spirit, in their their mind, their will, their mode, in their body. You know what I'm saying? Sin and you know what I'm saying, disease are spreading like gang cream. Ain't got no, you know what I'm saying, not in right standing, righteousness, the word says righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost. Those are the things that, you know what I'm saying, please God when we have his peace. But he said, there's no peace, said my God, to the wicked. So I pray God convict their hearts. If they refuse in the bail, you know what I'm saying, remove your peace and see how far they get. Why do you think people be up trying to occupy their minds all the time? They're trying to, you know what I'm saying, quench the Holy Spirit, trying to grieve the Holy Spirit. They don't want to be convicted the very thing that's going to produce godly sorrow within them, that they repent and be saved. But they think they can resist the will of God and the spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? At the end thereof, they're going to be a fool because at the end thereof, if they don't repent before Christ's return or they, you know what I'm saying, transition out of this world, at the end they shall be a fool because the power of God is going to compel them. And it's going to convict them severely and it's going to bring them to their knees. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God going to get his glory and all that in his, he going to give his commandments to his angels to bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness. Cast them into the lake of fire. Get them out of my sight. They refuse my love. They want to have a life uh, uh, to, free from me. Give them what they want. They think that's what they want. When they get it, they're going to be crying. The word said they're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when his judgment is given, it's final. There ain't no appeals. There ain't no more grace, period. And for those, it ain't going to be no love. No light, no love, no grace, no none of that. None of God's good graces. None, the wrath of God. The word said they shall drink from the cup of the wrath of God. See? And this is what, you know what I'm saying? God is not willing to inch the pairs. He's sending his, his ministers, his people, and they refuse to hear and repent and obey. Like they got forever. You know what I'm saying? Like that. They don't even really know. You know what I'm saying? What is your life? It's, it's like a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. And some people, you know what I'm saying? They're going to vanish away just like a vapor. Like the dew in the morning. It come up and then when the sun is risen, it's going to be consumed. And there they go. Going into e a Christless eternity, a godless eternity. Ain't gonna be no more good times roll rolling there. The fl the fire is not quenched and the worm does not die. This is not a joke. This is about eternal life and eternal death. It is you know God's love. You know what I'm saying? If you don't receive His gracious offer now, okay. Then people, if they, they transition out of the world, the Lord return, they will experience his wrath. Now is the time. The word says, now is the acceptable, acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And the day that you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. And anybody who hears the voice of God calling them to repentance to himself, and if they refuse and rebel... They harden their hearts toward God. They're refusing his love, his grace, his mercy, his goodness. And they want to continue in sin. And they don't know the day that God has appointed for them is appointed unto, unto men once to die, not the judgment. 
It ain't like, oh, you're going to live to a certain age and you're just going to die in a pe you know, at an old age. We don't know. We don't know when your, your due date is, that appointed in time is. And when God's calling, his, calling people and trying to get them to repent, you know what I'm saying, like that, it's before that date comes. Everybody got a different date. Don't try to compare your life with somebody else. You see them going down the Broadway would lead to destruction. You see them going and living in foolishness. You better not follow them. You don't know what their date is. It might be longer than yours. I ain't going to put my life, my eternal soul in nobody's hands. Trying to follow somebody else and trying to please them and be accepted and liked by them. And then God, death come calling us, oh, today is your day. Wait a minute, hold on, I got all these plans and I got all this stuff. And I got, what about, <laughs> you ain't even got time to get your house in order. You had all this time to get prepared. Your number is up. You got to go see the king. You got to give an account. Ain't gonna be, let me get ready and nothing like that. He said he coming back as a thief in the night, okay? Now is the time to get ready, get, get right with God. But he said when he coming back, nobody know the day nor the hour, not even the angels in heaven, only his father only. And we don't, huh, I know, you know what I'm saying? We hear that trumpet, <laughs> it's too late. People think they're gonna be, you ain't gonna because people are engrossed and hardened in sin. It ain't gonna just be no transformation. Cause you say, oh, he's on this. I hit the horn. He, like you gonna, your heart gonna be converted like that? No. The word said, can't no man come unless the Father draw him. So if they resisted and hardened their hearts against his spirit, huh, please. It's like Ichabod. The spirit of the Lord is departed. They're going to look for him and they're not going to be able to find him. They're going to wish for death and death going to flee from him. See? This is not no joke. This ain't playtime. This is preparation to meet the God of all creation. Okay? And to either hear him say, well done, you good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord, into his heavenly eternal kingdom, or to hear him say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I do not know you and be banished forever. No more love, no more joy, no more grace, no more good time, no more good feelings, none of that. Just pain and death and crying and sorrow forever. I mean, it's simple that a child can even understand it. I don't know what people's, you know, waiting on. I mean, it's like they're waiting on their final call. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's going to be good for them. They think God's going to give them a pass. Like God's going to break his own word and give them a pass. See? And those are the people who are going to have a rude awakening. Okay? When the God of all creation has no, you know what I'm saying, favor, look upon them with no favor whatsoever. Matter of fact, despite being despised in his eyes, abhorred by the God of all creation. Like you don't have no favor with God, no love. No one can save you but him through his son, Jesus Christ. No one, not your mama, dad, nobody you ever live, ever will live. No one, no other religion, no other so-called prophet or whatever, none. Okay, there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Okay, that is a name at Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed of God. If you ain't got it right with him, no man comes unto the Father but by me, says the Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you're not coming that way, by that way of truth, you will not have life in you. They will not have no life in them. All they will have is eternal death. And God is not willing that any should perish. That's not his will. But that all should come unto repentance. That's his will. That all should come unto repentance. That they might be saved. Okay? But if you're not going to repent, you're not going to be saved. 
You can't get there just going through the motions and going to church and think you can just do some good works. You're not going to do it without repentance. And the Holy Spirit is the one who produces godly sorrow, conviction, okay? Reformation in the inward man, in the heart, in the conscience of the man. That you are godly sorrow for your sins. That works repentance that you are re repented and turned from and forsaken. Because it says the sorrow of the world worketh death. And that's how people are now. They're the walking dead. Only little sorrow they got is the sorrow of the world. And it's producing death in them every day. We all dying daily. But it, those of us who got the Holy Spirit in us, our, our inner man is being renewed day by day. But the rest of them, they are literally the walking dead. They are dying daily. And they're going to be dead forever. In a state of eternal death. And even some now walking around, you know what I'm saying, all on these, you know what I'm saying, biting and devouring, you know what I'm saying, one another, destroying one another, you know what I'm saying, in each other's ministries and everything like that. Mm -hmm. God showed me. I don't want to have nothing to do, you know what I'm saying, with those walking, the walking dead. These people who are professing to be Christians that who are not, who are false brethren. They are the walking, they zombies going around devouring, you know what I'm saying, one another and trying to get at us. Had a dream, you know what I'm saying, zombies trying to bite me, you know what I'm saying, trying to get a hold of me. All it takes is, you don't know say a touch and a scratch to be infected by them and their sin. That's how sin is. It permeates a little leaven, leavens the whole lump. It was spread like gangrene, like a cancer. God say, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. You shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Beloved, having therefore these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. And that's what it is. People don't fear God. They don't fear he's going to send them to hell. God says, I am holy. Therefore, you shall be holy. And ain't nobody enter into his kingdom without holiness. Holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Would not even see his face. The one who will be condemning them. They won't even see his face. They'll be having a great desire to see that they might make their plea. And they won't even see his face. They won't even see the judge of all the earth. You know what I'm saying? Condemn them. They won't even have that privilege to see his face. Utterly contempt, condemn. No favor with God whatsoever. Out of, out, of, out, of, out of his sight. Out of their sight and out of his sight. They won't even enter the kingdom of God. Won't even see nothing in it. Because they, why? There won't be nothing in there prepared for them. There's nothing there. Okay? There's nothing there for you to see. There's nothing for you to partake of. Nothing. So you don't need, you not, they're not even going to see it. They're not even going to see it. Not going to see his faith. They ain't going to see nothing within the kingdom of God. They won't even see it. They won't be able to enjoy it by just looking at it with their eyes. I mean, they're blind now. Satan is blind to them now. And they'll be blind. For, but they'll be a rude equipment. They're gonna, but they, they're not going to see that. <laughs> That's going to be withholding from their eyes. They're not going to be able to see that. It's not going to be revealed to them. Those who die unrepentant. Who refuse to let the Holy Spirit produce godly sorrow within their hearts. That they might repent of their sins. Godly sorrow for their sins. That they might repent and be saved and receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. And he take up residence and seal them until the day of redemption. He will be with us forever. Those who die and repent it don't have them. <laughs> they will.
will have no hope. Right now, they are without God, without hope in the world. The scripture says, Jesus is our only hope. His Holy Spirit is our only hope. The one and true and only living God, Yahweh, is our only hope. His holy living word is our only hope. Okay, being a member of the body of Christ, his called out once, his ecclesia, his assembly, is our only hope. That which is pertaining to the one and only true and living God. That's what we would be partaking of. Amen. Praise God. I wasn't intending on going this way, but um, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly. I got inspired. You know what I'm saying? I think it was by this track, you know what I'm saying? Transform. You know what I'm saying? And they heard some other tracks and stuff. But um, yeah, we got to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Okay? We got to put on the full arm of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We got to be sober. We got to be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, he is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We are, we have to resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in our brethren that are in the world. In the world, but not of the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you and I have suffered a while, it's just a while compared to eternity, make you perfect, establish, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. Okay? We're going to be settled and not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Like a tree planted by the rivers of the living water, we shall bring forth our fruit in due season. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever Amen. This is about forever. Forever is a long time. That's how long I love you. Forever. And a lot of people ain't going to have that privilege to receive God's love forever. Or to even have the love of God in their heart to express to him. What they call it love now is lust. It's not even real love. Real love. Maybe a different expression of it, like eros, you know, something like that. Or friendship, love, you know, phileo, something like that. But not agape. Not the love of God. They don't have, if they don't have the love of God shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. And that's by the Holy Spirit. Can't have that love without the Holy Spirit, who's the one who gives it. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of love. To shed abroad his love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. People can't give and express what they don't have. They haven't received. The word said the world loved its own. See, they don't love us. I don't know why Christians are so, you know what I'm saying, bewildered, enamored. That was another word I was going to say, you know what I'm saying, transfixed about, about the world, trying to win the, the, the world's favor and their love and affection. You know what I'm saying? It's when, when we used to be in the world, you know what I'm saying? Like that when we was in the world, without God, without hope in the world. And they, now they're still trying to win the world's affection and love. The world don't love us no more. Because we're not of the world. Because God, the Lord chose us out of the world. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. Jesus said, you'd be ashamed of me. I'd be ashamed of you to confess you before our fathers in heaven. You ask people now, they're Christian and follow Jesus Christ. They got all these other... Antonyms and sin, all this other stuff is just coming out and just saying yes or no. Well, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, all this kind of stuff. I ain't asked you all that. The Lord ain't gonna be like that when He asks you something. All that ain't gonna cut it. Did you do my will? Yes or no? Ain't no excuses allowed. People are ashamed to confess Christ Jesus Lord. Why? Because they are they're afraid, they're fearful and apprehensive of being persecuted. Persecuted for Christ's name's sake. When the word says that we will be partakers of the afflictions of the gospel. And if you're not equipped 
with that doctrine and you don't know saying and equip and your you don't know saying your spirit and your soul and your body, you won't be able to stand in the day of evil. But they want to be cowards and scared that mm, with this Satan to get me and some demons to get me and, and some uh, and Satan's ministers and, and you know and, and the evil workers and the, the magicians and the sorcerers. I, I don't want to antagonize them. I, I'm scared. Oh, they might take this from me. My money, my house, my car, my job, my business. We're gonna have to leave it all behind anyway. When you're trying to hold on to something that you can't keep forever, afraid that somebody going to take it from you. If God give it, the Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> if I say, if I agree with you, they're going to persecute me. They're going to do all this. They don't want to suffer with Christ. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It's already a death sentence. But see, if people ain't being taught that, to die to themselves, to live unto God, they're going to fail in the day of the testing and trial and trip. You know what I'm saying? The day of evil. They're not going to be able to stand. They're going to have no armor on or nothing. They're not going to be able to stand. They're going to fall, and a lot of them are going to fall away. As the scripture says, the Spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Okay? Mm-hmm. They're going to fall away. And it's impossible, Okay? to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucify the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. They out there, you know what I'm saying, putting the, the Lord to an open shame, professing by their mouth, you know what I'm saying? These people draw near unto me with their mouths, but their hearts are far off from me. Their heart goes after their covetousness, which is their real God. They think they can fool God. That's a fool to think that you can fool the one and only true and all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful God. Satan truly got them deceived. And we call, you know what I'm saying, to wake them up, to bring them to the full knowledge of the truth. But some love it. You know what I'm saying? He said, my people love to have it so. They love to have it so. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Those are deceiving spirits, misleading spirits, and doctrines of demons speaking lies in hypocrisy. So many hypocrites and deceivers, many deceivers are going out into the world, many false prophets are going out in the world, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay? They ain't even conscious of their sin or any kind of prickling or conviction godly sorrow their hearts have been hardened through the deceitfulness of sin sin hardens the heart toward the holy spirit of god the will of god and that's what they contending with and resisting god and that's going to eventually going to be a showdown they think they can overpower god's spirit his power they are going to be subdued brought down to their knees humbled and he's going to make them confess out of their mouth that his son, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, is, the, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And after he got his glory, he's going to say, get rid of them. They ain't good for nothing now. I had to compel them to do that. They, they wasn't willing. They thought they could over, overpower my will and my power by resisting his will and his power. The word said they're going to be found Fighting against God. That's a, that's, that's a person who's totally been deceived. Resisting God's will. Fighting against God. Taking a side with God's enemy. God's enemy whom he created. God is not a created being. The thing formed 
He can do whatever he want to. <laughs> I don't know why people don't understand the simplicity, simplicity of the gospel, the truth of the word of God. And we have real truth teachers breaking it down. You know what I'm saying? It's simple that even a child can understand. God ain't make a heart. You know what I'm saying? That a person, they can't understand it. Even child, they are children or saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Being made to drink of the one spirit. Got spiritual gifts and graces. Greater. Doing greater works than me and a lot of other adults who have been saved for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And I ain't jealous not any of me or other because they're the next generation. The young soldiers that are coming up. You know what I'm saying? Coming up in their ranks. And I say, God bless them. Anything I can do to, you know what I'm saying, equip them and impart unto them any a spiritual gift and, they, and, and graces because they're going to have to be the one to advance the kingdom until the day of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? And on and on, like I said, until the day of Jesus Christ. Because we transit, we we, we going to be transitioning. If the Lord going to come, we all going to be transforming in a twinkle of an eye. But some of us, we're transitioning every day. Every day. We can prepare. We don't know when that day is. We can make plans. Okay? But if it's our time, it's our time. And that, for the Christian, is a joyous time. It ain't something to dread. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It is not something to dread or to fear. If we, um, you know what I'm saying, we're in right standing with God, we preparing. That's what we're preparing for, to meet our maker. So that we can give an account with joy, not be fear and apprehensive and, you know, perfect love casts out fear. He that fears is not made perfect in love. A lot of people are not made perfect in love. The overall distinguishing mark of a Christian is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit and expressed toward one another, even toward those who are without, even toward our enemies. And if we're not walking in that, we have not been perfected in love. And we're not pleasing, a lot of people are not pleasing God, okay? They do not please God, the scriptures say, and they are contrary to all men because they are standing in the way of sinners. Okay? Jesus said, you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you know, convert, whatever, you make him twofold the child of hell than yourselves. It says, you don't enter the, into the kingdom of God and neither do you allow them that are, that are entering, that they on their way to enter and they are standing in their way and forbidding them to go into the kingdom of God, to enter in. They haven't even went in and they stand in as gatekeepers as though they have authority to be gatekeepers and forbidding other people to go in. They haven't even went into the kingdom of God. Wake up, people. If you go in the way of the Lord, they can't stop you from entering into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the door. If any man come in by me, okay, he shall be saved. He shall be saved. If you try to go up any other kind of way, he said the same as a thief and a robber. People think they can go in any old kind of way into the kingdom of God. Then they want to walk in or whatever, climb over this and go and take this shortcut and dig a ditch or leap, fly over, whatever. And, and avoid Christ and not come through Christ. Not receive the Holy Spirit. Not be, you know what I'm saying, reformed. Unless a man is born again of the water and the Spirit, he can't even see the kingdom of God. Born from above, can't even enter the kingdom of God, much less see it. They think they can get in there all these other ways. Oh, it's many paths to God or to heaven. All these myths and stories made up and told by men, fables, basically lies. Instead of believing the truth, the way of truth. 
Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If anybody try to come up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And you know that's Satan's MO. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Those are his children. They're not going to get in. Don't be one of them. You might be one right now and don't know it. So I admonish you, I plead you, I beg you on behalf of Christ and God to repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. Be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. And to as many as are far off, and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's calling you personally unto himself. Respond to him in repentance, faith, and obedience. And when you do that, God's promise to you is that he will receive you. He says, I will receive you personally. And I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my son's and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Praise Yah. Amen. So we encourage you. Pray. Ask the Lord to lead you to a faithful follower of the Jesus Christ. Okay. Or an assembly of saints. And we don't all assemble inside church buildings. Some of us assemble in our homes. In other buildings. Outside. In under in open air, under tents, uh, in shanty shacks, okay. So don't lean to your own understanding and think you got to go to some church or go join some church. He didn't tell you to do that. He said be baptized. So when you come to a a follower of the way, called a Christian, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, yes, the Messiah. You want to let them know that you want to obey Christ's ordinance in baptism. Okay? That's your first act of obedience. Okay? To be planted in the likeness of Jesus' death, fully immersed in the water, baptized, raised, out of the water in the likeness of his resurrection to therefore walk and live in the newness of life, living in the spirit of God, walking in the spirit of God, being led of the spirit of God. Okay, and when you do this, God's promise is that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The victory over the world of flesh and the devil is in the spirit of God, okay? No other victory will we, we, we obtain apart from the spirit of God living and walking and being led of the Holy Spirit. See? Because other than that, we will be in the flesh and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So, Note that. So if you're having a slip, you better get back in the, and step with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So pray and ask the Lord to lead you to a faith, to a, a faithful assembly, you know what I'm saying, like that. Or who are you to be subject unto? To assemble and gather with other believers and fellowship and prayer, you know what I'm saying? To, you know what I'm saying? To be ministered to and to be taught. The doctrine, the teachings and instructions of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, that he gave to his holy apostles, which is also called the Apostles Doctrine, which is sound doctrine. Amen. Who are you to be subject to? Okay, faithful under shepherds called pastors, teachers, okay, presbyters, bishops. Okay, elders, okay, those who serve in the office of the evangelist, in the office of the prophet, and the office of the apostle, as messengers of the assemblies, along with the deacons. Amen. As you desire 
the sincere milk of the word of God, you may grow up into him in Christ Jesus the Lord in all things, who is the head over all things to his body, his called out ones, his ecclesia. Amen. Unto strong meat, which are the deeper truths and revelations of the word of God, which belong unto us who are of full age, spiritually mature, who by reason of use have our senses exercised, trained to discern both good and evil, that we may learn to hold fast to that which is good, and that is the living word of God. Never let anyone take it away from you. Amen. And to stand aloof, away, off from, okay, evil, sin, wickedness, evil workers, okay? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Amen? And even if you have to, flee from all sin and evil and wickedness, okay? Amen. Flee from it. Abstain from it. In all its forms. Amen. And pray and ask the Lord if I am to be one of those faithful under shepherds who are to disciple you in the doctrine of Christ, the apostles doctrine, sound doctrine. If the Lord confirm it to you, you welcome to follow my ministry here on TikTok. I will be here to serve you. I have two profiles here on TikTok. One of them here is Sword the Word and the other one is Minister Tracy. Both have the same, you know, saying content pretty much on each one. Um, same profile picture. So make sure you hit the follow button, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I go live. And sometimes I go live, you know, what I'm saying like earlier tonight I was on Minister Tracy. I was on that one going live. And then I ended that and I came over here on this one and I went, I'm going live now on Sword of the Word. On both of those profiles, you will see a link or the logo to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? That's red. You know what I'm saying? That. And you can click on it, touch it. It will take you directly to my Sword of the Word YouTube channel. And when you get over there, hit the subscribe button there. Hit the notification bell there. I have a lot of, you know what I'm saying, videos, long content, not so long, short videos and shorts, okay, where you can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? You will be challenged, Okay? But you will be edified. You will be encouraged and strengthened. Amen. Spurred on to love and to good works. Amen. All I ask is that after you watch the videos and shorts, hit the like button over there. If you desire, you can leave a comment to encourage me and others. And then share it with others. Amen. And I pray that the Lord would bless your efforts. Amen. Your faithfulness and your obedience. Pray for my strength in the Lord that I may fulfill my ministry and my responsibilities as well. In Jesus' name, I appreciate it very much. I never want to close the broadcast, amen, without pronouncing a blessing over your lives and this broadcast for future viewers. Amen. I almost forget, feel like I'm forgetting something, but uh, that's okay. So at this time, we ask you all to lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Open up your hearts to receive the blessing. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in 
every good work to do his will. Working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Grace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. Thank you all for being here. Give me an opportunity to serve you and fellowship with you in the spirit of God, the word of God through praise and worship music. And of course, we were playing Christian hip hop, R&B and soul tonight. Amen. So um, you all, you know, thank you for the shares, the hearts. If anyone giving a gift, may the Lord bless you one your fold. Amen. And so you all continue to have a super blessed day, night, evening in the Lord Jesus Christ with your family, Christian friends, and all the saints of God with you. And Lord willing, I will see you all soon. Amen. Praise God.